Ooh. Here, so let's go ahead and just go nice and easy. Hi guys, back to Trump Enterprise channel. I really appreciate if you guys comment down below because I read all the comments one by one. Before I start this video, I want you guys to click the subscribe button and don't forget to click the notification bell so that you guys can get a notification every time I upload a video. Five, four, three, two, one. Thank you. Please click the like button to show your support and by clicking the like button, you actually help this channel and by the way, if you guys want to play or invest in stock market or shares you guys can click the link in the description down below Thank you That finish and the camera layout are the only really new things back here with the design. On the front of the phone, it's gonna look like almost exactly the same thing as last year. Same screen sizes and resolutions, same notch, same bezels. Literally, you could put it next to last year's phone and you might have a hard time telling which one's which. So achieved by getting rid of 3D Touch, so RIP. Apple Watch is really the only new Apple product now with 3D Touch shipping in it. But by getting rid of that pressure sensitive display hardware, that's allowed more space in the phone for a bigger battery. It's true, the teardowns have shown it, the battery is bigger. So that's why the battery difference from the 10R to the 11 was one hour. That's just A13 Bionic improvements. But the improvement from the 10S to the 11 Pro was four hours because getting rid of that 3D touch hardware has left room for more bigger battery. Triple cameras now, three new sensors. So you have the primary 12 megapixel sensor, a 2X telephoto camera, and a 0.5X ultra wide camera, about 120 degree field of view. And it's true, the iPhone 11's cameras are a big improvement over the 10s. In broad daylight, I would go as far as saying this has been an A-plus camera, often taking the best, sharpest, and cleanest photos I've seen a smartphone take. Colors are great, they're realistic, so not too over-processed. Dynamic range is excellent, and of course, with subjects, their tonal mapping is next level. It's really good. Which the new UI also in iPhone's camera app is improved for the first time in a while. You know, they simplified a few controls, brought them to the bottom where you can reach them with one hand. And now when you open it, you get a preview of what's gonna show up in the ultra wide if you switch to it. But I, I don't really want that there. I, I, mean, I think it's kind of cool that it shows what you could see, but when I just wanna take a normal photo, it's kind of distracting. It lags behind a little the actual framing and it's not perfectly aligned all the time. So I wanna turn it off, but I can't. It will fade out automatically when it detects that you're taking a photo of a close up subject, since I guess it recognizes that ultra wise are more for landscapes or far away subjects. And then it'll come back automatically when you put that close subject away. But yeah, I wanna be able to just shut it completely off. Uh, there's also now finally a dedicated night mode, which turns on automatically when it thinks it's dark enough, but sometimes it's kind of dim and it doesn't turn on when you want it to, but there's no way to manually turn on night mode, which isn't very pro, but okay. But when you do get it turned on, the UI is excellent. It gives you exposure equivalence so you can turn up or down live, and it will go for way longer times if it detects you're on a tripod or stabilized. And then you can see the picture sort of brighten up as it's being taken, almost like it's exposing the frame in real time, which is pretty sick. And the shots you can get now at night and in low light on the iPhone are very good. There's no clear overall winner, I think, for best night mode right now, in my opinion. They all sort of do it a different way. It's easier now in the UI to just quickly start taking a video. So if you see something you like, you open the camera up and just hold down the shutter button and it just starts recording. So just like Instagram or Snapchat. And if you want to lock it into video recording, you just drag it over to the right. In three, two, one. Unscathed, stainless steel, does scratch, of course. A little dent in there, but overall, perfect. Let's go to the side. Three, two, one. Ooh. And one more. Three, two, one. That's a little gnarly, but seems okay. 
Nothing has happened. Still looks really good. One. Oof. Before I look at that, the 11 Pro Max. In three, two, one. Okay, moment of truth and the ringer switch went off, so that was quite an impact. Okay, both have survived. And flawless glass. That's the side. And once more in three, two, one. Quite an impact. Whew. So we've buckled the actual stainless steel border that has broken inwards and yet the glass still refuses to break. And on the 11, same thing, the 11 Pro, nothing has happened. A very badly dented stainless steel border, yet no damage. In three, two, one. So more of on the back. And three, two, one. Ooh, that's an iPhone sandwich. I thought I heard something. Oh, there it is. So, wow, that took repeated drops just to get to this point, and the 11 has broke on the front. So that was a little of a weird fall. They both hit each other. Maybe, maybe the only reason it broke is because the world's most durable glass met the world's most durable glass and something had to budge. But that's what it took. So near 10 feet and repeatedly had to do it twice just to break it. Now, when this glass does break, let's see the situation here. So it's definitely sticking out and there's a very weird color shift effect going on in the cracks here. Wow, that's a very interesting. So Apple's coating there is peeling off and yeah. So this is not like Gorilla Glass where it's not sharp. You're definitely gonna be cutting your fingers on this when it does break. In the lens, surprisingly, nothing really bad has happened here. This took so much effort just to get here. On the front, it's a lot smoother. So no jutting pieces here. Could still use it normally. The entire phone is a little warped, like it's bent. Two, one. Oh, that did it. Okay, so this one has a gnarly mess going around the camera lens, but it took such an impact for this to happen. It's ridiculous. They've made the screen too, too good. The front didn't even break on this one after a almost 10 foot drop. So I am actually very shocked at the durability of these phones. Apple did fantastic. You know, still use a case, you wanna protect it, but know that in the rare occurrence that if it does drop without a case in pretty optimal situations, not too jagged, you'll be here and uh, just a few pressure hits. Oh, 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 okay, okay. So, uh, how many hits was that? Three, three, four hits, not too crazy but a big, big crack. And it does actually crack on the back too. So even though it doesn't feel like glass, that's really crazy that, um, you know, you'll still get that crack. And now with that front facing durability test, guys. So first things first, I'm just dropping the hammer about two, three inches from the display in three, two, one. Good, good. No cracks at all. Let's do that one more time. Just a little bit higher in three, two, one. Okay. So I would, I'm surprised there. I would imagine it would crack. That was pretty high of a drop, two and a half pound hammer. Uh, let's start with some smashes now. So I'm going to take it easy and then go uh, more and more stronger here. So let's go ahead and just go nice and easy. testing different parts. Okay, okay, so kind of a medium sized hit necessary in order to create that initial shatter. And that shatter, I mean, it's everywhere. 
look at the edge of the iPhone went all the way to the top here in the middle all the way to the very bottom phone still works that's good okay cracks very easily now nice this is what I like to see here the leaking of the blackness into the display look at that beautiful color so phone okay now it's having some trouble here you have some white spreading let's deliver more hits nice okay cool have black have blue this is a cool new maybe concept for future iPhones here look at that that's awesome how's the back the back man this phone looks bent too in a way weird oh maybe that's just I think that's just the battery popping up here cuz I'm feeling a little bit of warmth nice two one Oof. The corner drop did its damage to both phones, although this time we see the opposite result with the iPhone 11 Pro Max's stainless steel frame showing less damage than the more scuffed up aluminum on the Note. Three, two, one. After the face drop, both phones unfortunately cracked. The iPhone's damage started out at the bottom left and ran all the way up and across the display while the Note 10's was a bit more contained to that bottom left and left edge. So once again, despite Apple's claim of having the toughest glass in any smartphone, it looks like the Note 10 Plus's glass takes less damage overall. Fun. The iPhone typically doesn't do all that well in the bonus round here, but so far, so good. Camera, still looks like it's working. Nice. In three, two, one. Three, two, one. A little souvenir. You can see the Apple logo, you know, still holding up, but right there, okay, there's glass coming off on the other side. Right there, you can see the metal underneath. Of course, we don't know if the front of the phone is okay. Seems like it's just, again, just more shattered. Emergency call, yes, that would work. Home button, what about Face ID? Face ID is still working. And last test for now, before we take it under the microscope, cameras seem to be working just fine. Three, two, one. Not too many differences here on the back. On the front, again, full functionality. So last time, we, this, this top row with the, with the iPhone XS Max, stopped working but you can see we have full functionality still on the touchscreen the OLED display from, at least from what I can see right here looks like it's actually fine it's just the glass that shattered and as a result we have full functionality at least with the touchscreen uh-oh uh-oh oh I hear I hear what what is going on I hear like a it's vibrating the cameras are not working all right let's try this again let's try to Close it out. Wow. I'll try the other camera. No! Technically made it through all 10 bonus drops, the first time we've ever seen an iPhone do that before. Of course, it's not all good news. In the first round, the Note 10 Plus suffered less cracks. In the second, the iPhone's stainless steel outperformed. In the third, the Note showed us that its glass is as tough as any phone. And finally, in the fourth, the Note retained full functionality while the iPhone's cameras stopped working, allowing the Note to score more points overall, making it the winner in this drop test. Let's hit the like button to show that you actually support. Also, don't forget to subscribe this channel 
and don't forget to turn on the notification bell. Also, comment down below what is your thought. Thank you everyone for not skipping the video and watch this video until the end. I personally really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for clicking the subscribe button and also thank you so much for clicking the notification bell. Don't forget to share this video to your friend and family. Let's like this video and also if you already subscribed to this channel, let's hit those notification bell so that every time I upload the video, you will get a notification. And don't forget if you guys want to start playing a stock market or shares, click the link in the description down below and I'll see you guys on the next video.